Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. And if you are new, hello, I am Sephora, or also known as Izzy. And here on my YouTube channel, I make Sims content. For today's video, as you guys can see by the title, I am bringing you all a Sims 3 comprehensive fix guide in this year's edition. Last year around this time, I made a similar video to this, but your girl has found new ways to help you all fix or improve your Sims 3 game performance. When I tell you all these different tips and tricks made such a significant impact on my game, you wouldn't believe it. So if you're a summer who is currently playing on Windows, a lower or higher end computer, then this video is for you. However, I would like to make a disclaimer that I am not any type of Sims guru or computer guru. So please keep in mind that I cannot solve all of your in-game or computer issues. And if you have any questions or concerns, I will gladly answer them in the comment section down below. But like always, let's just get right into the video. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at two different Sims 3 performance guides. I have to give credit where it's due and these guides seem to be the only guides that actually made sense and helped me out. The first guide we're looking at is called the Sims 3 performance performance and bug fix guide 2022. This guide was created by Anime Boom and it's basically a guide on how to make the Sims 3 run smoother, use mods to fix unpatched bugs, and fix some compatibility issues on newer gaming PC hardware and systems. Hello, welcome to my guide for the Sims 3 and how to improve its performance on newer PC systems. Every step that I have listed are steps that I personally use to make my game run much more smoother on my PC system. If a step has an optional tag in the title, it means it's up to you if you would like to add the tweaks to your game. If it has a essential tag in a title, it is recommended that you use the step to get the best results with the game and its performance. If you have any questions, feel free to look at the FAQ section or ask in the comments below, and I will be sure to assist you in any way that I can. Happy simming. This guide is intended to be used with the game version 1.67 and 1.69. This guide was not made to be used with the game version 1.70, which is the 64 bit Mac update. Edit at your own risk if you're using the game version 1.70, and like any type of game guide that makes you edit the game files, always, always back up your files before starting. Making the game recognize your GPU. This step is very important for those using newer or older GPUs. If you don't know what a GPU is, it's another word for a graphics card, and the purpose of it is to render graphics. The reason as to why you should make your game recognize your GPU, because it'll benefit in less lag spike in your gameplay. There's two different ways on how you can have your game recognize your GPU, but I'm going to show you guys the way I did it because it's more accurate. There is a GPU add-on support tool, but I'm not going to recommend it to you guys because I've heard that it doesn't work. So if you guys go into your documents, electronic arts, and the Sims 3 folder, you will see a device config log file. If you open it up and look all the way down to the graphics device info, you will probably notice that your GPU database is found zero and matched zero. That means your GPU is not recognized. My GPU is already recognized, so I'm going to show y'all how to recognize your own. Now, please listen to this step very carefully because it can be confusing. If you go into your program files times 86, Origin Games, The Sims 3, Game, bin, you will see a graphics card SGR file. So go ahead and open it up. Once you open it up, you will see a long list of lovely GPU series and you have to find your own. I would recommend keeping up your device config file so that you can save yourself some time. You're probably wondering where do I put what? And if you look back at your device config log and find your vendor, my vendor is ATI. So I'm gonna look back at my graphics card SGR file and look for that specific vendor, which is right here. Now, if you have Nvidia and you scroll all the way down it should be right here. So you're going to put your info right here. And if you have Intel, yours is going to be all the way at the bottom and you're going to put your information under here. Once you figure out which vendor you have, you need to find exactly which GPU series you have. Mine is Radon RX 6800 XT series and I put it right here. I don't think the placement really matters, but do it just in case. As long as you have the correct numbers in there and your sentence is properly formatted, the game should recognize your GPU. Let me show y'all a little demonstration. When I typed in my information, all I had to do was press enter and spacebar a few until it's evened out. I typed in card and you want to put in these weird looking numbers and letters but you have to go over here and look at your device config law and go and find your chipset and your device number so you see this yeah it's like 
numbers and letters combined. But first you wanna put in this zero X and you wanna mimic that number right there. So mine is seven three BF and you wanna do that space again until everything is evened out and put those quotation marks and put down your vendor name, mine is ATI, but I have to put AMD. I don't know why. And then you wanna type in basically your graphics card name, which is mine is Radon RX and that 6800 series. And make sure that's in caps. I don't even know why that's like lower, but you, you get the gist. And then I wanna put in that XT, unless you have that series like this, but I don't have it. So I'm just gonna keep it like that and then put your quotation marks and make sure you save the file. Here's another example of what your information should look like on your graphics card SGR file. I hope it makes sense to y'all because this is the best that I can explain it. Next Next, you will need to open up your graphics rules SGR file, which is also located in the Sims 3 game bin. This part is hella confusing, so listen very carefully to this part as well. Once your graphics rules SGR file is open, you're gonna scroll down and find your vendor name once again, like you did with the other file. So if you're NVIDIA, you are up here. If you are ATI just like me, you're in the middle. And if you're Intel, you are the very last one down here. Okay, so let me just tell y'all, just copy and paste. You're gonna save so much time. So if y'all see this thing right here that says, or match and all that humble jumble just copy all up into here yes copy don't type nothing and let me show y'all where mine is i'm just gonna like do like a little copy and paste all right so i'm gonna space this out and put it again and then i'm gonna type in the quotation marks the star and half of the gpu name which is the rx i got that from my device config log so if yours is like nvidia gtx you would put that so let me go ahead and put in this information um rx and if you ask me where they got these numbers, make sure you put a space. If you ask me where they got these numbers, I have no idea. All I know is that mine is in a 6,000 series. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that six. And I'm gonna put three question marks because 800, there's three numbers there. So I'm looking at it as like, okay, let's put three question marks there. And then you wanna put that star again, and you wanna put that quotation mark, and you wanna put those little, I don't even know what they're called, but you see and make sure you save the file. Finally, once you open up your Sims 3 game and reopen your device config log file, your GPU should say found one and match one. If not, rewatch my steps again. Limiting your FPS. Limiting the game to only 60 frames or 30 frames will increase the game performance dramatically. The reason this being is that the game engine The Sims 3 runs on is optimized for 60 frames and under. So limiting the frames to 60 or under will improve the game's overall performance. Origin 1.69 users only need to apply this to the ts3.exe since origin does not use or have the ts3w.exe file so whoever has nvidia you're lucky because you were given a nice demonstration if you're an amd user like me go ahead and open the amd software once you get the software open click the sims 3 look for global graphics and scroll all the way down to advance. And then you're gonna look for a frame rate target control. You wanna enable that, and then you wanna set your FPS to either 60 or 30 like the guide said. Making the game use more CPU. If you are using a PC with a low-end CPU or a PC that is not meant for gaming, please skip this step. If you don't know what a CPU is, it is also known as a central processing unit. I like to call this the brain of the computer because it is responsible for all data processing operations. Making the game use more CPU was such a game changer for me. All you have to do is go back into your graphic rules SGR file in your Sims 3 bin folder and change the four numbers from 4321 to 4333, then save the file. Making the game use the correct amount of VRAM. If you don't know what VRAM is, it is also known as video RAM. This is completely different from RAM. VRAM is a portion of RAM that is specifically dedicated to processing graphics related tasks. It also ensures that the display of graphics is executed smoothly and evenly. Once again, open up your graphic rules SGR file in your Sims 3 bin folder and look for steady texture memory 32. But before we make any changes, you need to know how much VRAM is on your GPU. If you don't know how much VRAM is on your GPU, you can Google this information. I typed in my GPU, which is AMD Radon RX 6800 XT VRAM, and Google says that I have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. Once you know how much VRAM your GPU has, you can now change the steady 
texture memory number from 32 to your GPU VRAM amount, but converted in megabyte. Here's a list of the VRAM conversions from gigabyte to megabyte. Since I have 16 gigabytes of VRAM on my GPU, I'm gonna change this number to 8,192. And then you wanna go down here to set B texture memory size, okay, false, and put a hashtag in front of it and also space it. And then you're good to go to save the file. Clearing cache files. Every time you open up your Sims 3 game, the game generates cache files. This can slow down your game performance because over time, these files will become very large. So deleting these files before running your game will make your game run smooth. And I can guarantee that this is safe to do. Cleaning DC backup folder. When installing things through the launcher, the path to those files are saved in this file. But of course, there are a lot of files that are not needed and will slow down the game. You can delete everything in this folder except for one file and it is called CC Merged. This file is required. The rest can be deleted without any trouble. If you intend to upload a Sims and Lots with CC to the Exchange or any other site, do not delete these files, or the Sim and Lots will use non-CC files when exported. Restricting store generated JPGs. The featured items folder is so unnecessary. It generates images of the store items every time you click on the store feature in the game. So disabling this folder from updating more JPGs will increase your game performance. Going back to your Electronic Arts Sims 3 folder, look for a folder called Featured Items. When you find this folder, go ahead and right click it and press Properties. Make sure you guys have admin because you need admin rights to do this. Then you want to go ahead and go to Security, Edit, and you want to deny everything here on this list. Once it's denied, you're good to press Apply and OK. Enros Mods. All right, now we're looking at another Sims 3 guide from Reddit created by Shang Simla. Enros Mods are must-have mods in my opinion. They can have a significant impact on your game performance. The Enros Mods that I would highly recommend are Master Controller and Master Controller Integration, Air Trap, Overwatch Debug Enabler, Saver, Tempest, Traffic, and Register. You will need a mods folder for these mods. If you don't know how to create a mods folder, there's plenty of resources out there to guide you on the web. World Fixes. Sims 3 World Fixes may come in hand for some people that struggle to run certain worlds. For an example, I notice a lot of people are not able to play on Bridgeport or Isla Paradiso due to lag, crash, or poor routing. Thanks, EA. But thankfully for this mod creator named Ella Charmed, they created World Fixes. So check it out if you're having any world issues. Smooth Patch 1.21 and 2.0 Beta. The Sims 3 Smooth Patch. This mod is created by Lazy Duchess and it is a miracle. I highly recommend everyone to download this mod right now because this mod makes the game's logic thread run faster, speeds up the loading of build and buy and cast, smoother UI elements, smoother cast, and can also speed up live mode and loading. It's essentially a general improvement. If Lazy Duchess instructions are confusing, I have a video on how to download this mod and a mini overview of what it looks like in game. The Sims 3 Smooth Patch 2.0 Beta also created by Lazy Duchess. This mod recently got released to the public and I am in love with this mod. This mod consists of cast clothing now load way quicker, allowing you to switch between categories, scroll through clothes and switch clothes with ease, cast no longer disable buttons while it loads patterns, allowing you to utilize it and change categories quicker, buy and build object previews now spin at a reasonable speed regardless of your TPS, Cast audio fixes, Sims voices will no longer be sped up or paused in cast, and music shouldn't stop at random anymore. And semi-compatibility with Master Controller cast, most non-clothing related features should work. Clothing related MC settings will mostly be ignored. Right-clicking on cast items to display a log does work, however, working on improving compatibility. This mod is actually really easy to download. All you need to do is place it into your mods folder, but keep in mind that this mod is still in beta, and it is recommended that you have the main version of smooth patch with this. Regal Save Cleaner. This program is used to clean your save files and maintain its stability. It is very important to clean your save files at least once a week. Cleaning your save files can prevent it from bloating up and any annoying error codes. This program is easy to download. You may need to install Net461 or Net6, but it is completely safe to have on your computer. Once you get the Regal Save Cleaner program successfully installed on your computer, it will look like this. And then you'll see a bunch of cleaning options. You get to remove family portraits,
Kurt's portraits of Sims, lot thumbnails, photos, generated images, textures, and other types. You can also make yourself a backup, which is highly recommended, and clear a bunch of cache files. Dashboard Tool I think everyone knows of this program, and if you don't, I recommend downloading it. This program is really good at detecting any CC-related problems like Sims 2 or Sims 4 packages, duplicates, conflicts, corruptions, and disabled CC. This program is also really easy to download, however, you may need to install Net Framework 3.5. No or fewer automatic memories. This mod is a lifesaver, especially if you don't care for the Sims 3 memory system. This mod stops the memory scrapbook from filling up with useless memories that then have to be manually deleted to keep the save file small. With this mod, you have three different decisions to download from. I am currently using the mod that turns off all memories, but there's also a version for only important memories, or you can customize your own. Similar 90s gameplay systems core mod. This mod is a big core mod. It fixes all of EA's mistakes. I recently added this mod to my game. So far, I am enjoying it, so download this at your own risk because it can become an issue if not downloaded correctly. For this part, I advise you all to listen very carefully. So what you guys need to do is download S3PE. And if you haven't already, go ahead and download the gameplay systems core mod. Once you download the mod, open it up with S3PE. All you have to do is press file and open. You just have to remember where you extracted the file. I would recommend placing it on your desktop. Next, you will need to download this crazy looking mod that allows it to be compatible with your NROS mods. Just drag it right into S3PE like so. And then you're gonna see like this box pop up and all you have to do is press okay. Finally, you're gonna notice that something is crossed off, which is what you need to see. So go ahead and save the mod and place it into your mods folder. Now that the gameplay system core mod is in your mods folder before you open up your game you need to create an overrides folder it's really easy all you have to do is press a new folder and name it overrides once you get this folder made you need to move all of your nros mods into your overrides folder this is very important because i believe this mod has heavy conflict with nros mods bug fixes in this section, you will find mods that will fix issues and bugs that were never patched by EA and The Sims team. Even some mods that add some minor tweaks to gameplay. With no performance impact, some may even help performance. The mods in this section are built to work with at least game version 1.67 and should have no issue with 1.69. Anime Boom deserves a round of applause for gathering a bunch of mods for The Sims 3 base game and all of the expansion packs to fix any gameplay bugs. So definitely check out these mods. I have a few of these for myself. In game settings. This is the last step that I will be showing you guys because it is not mandatory. In my general settings, I have almost everything disabled because I don't care for it. And I feel like my game runs so much better. Disabling shop mode, lessons, memories, and interactive loading screens can improve your game performance. Logging out of your Sims 3 player profile and disabling online notifications can also improve your game performance. And finally, tweaking your population control settings can improve your game performance. I am not a fan of occult sim so it is disabled for me. I also have horses disabled because they tend to overpopulate themselves in my game. For my occult simmers that want to disable occults, if you're afraid that this will change your sims life stage, it will not. I hope you guys found this video to be helpful because I am going to end this video right here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you're new, and I will see you all in my next video.